Hello everyone, Alexa Dunn here, and you're like, wow, two videos in such close succession, she must be back. Maybe. At this point, if I feel the urge to film a video, I'm leaning into it, because I went so long not doing that. And part of this is twofold. One, I've been thinking in the back of my head for over a month, you should probably make a video about this. Two, in my last video that I posted last week about book publicity scams, I was like, oh, you probably should have mentioned that. You've basically cornered yourself into having to make one of those update videos. Y'all, I've been nominated for an award? What? <laughs> I can say with complete seriousness, I can't believe I'm in this position. And so I'm here to share the news with you, to celebrate. The thing is, I found out about this nomination two months ago, and has it just kind of cycled in the back of my brain for two months? You know, you should really make a YouTube video about this, and I didn't? Yeah. Yeah. So, first off, my apology that I didn't share this news with you sooner. Like, I, I know, I know I'm terrible. It feels like, like a slight betrayal, like, you've been with me the whole time, like, YouTube is my space. Did I cheat on you and put this on TikTok? Yes, I did. I'm sorry. But maybe if I'm a really good author, I will vlog my trip to New York for the awards ceremony and give you that content. Maybe that'll make up for it. So I'm going to New York. But backing up, I'm nominated for an award. What is the award? What is happening? So yeah, my fourth published book, the second thriller I've written, my labor of love through 2020 and 2021, Pretty Dead Queens, has been nominated for an Edgar Award for Best Young Adult. It's not just faux humility when I say this blew my mind and I still like have moments on days. It's been two months since I found out about this and the award ceremony is in late April where I go, what? I, I have to like remind myself that this is happening because it genuinely was unexpected. I mean, you've been with me on this channel for years. You've heard me talk about my writing, about my expectations for my career. And you know, I've always known I am a commercial fiction writer. I'm not the best writer in the universe. You know, who doesn't love imposter syndrome and a bit of negging? But like genuinely, that's not what I was setting out to write. There are technically pathways where you can legit set out to write awards bait books. And that's not what I write. And so to know that the Mystery Writers of America, like the premier organization for mystery writers who have awards named after the Edgar Allan Poe, think I'm worthy of a nomination for Best Young Adult? It's a privilege. It's mind blowing. It's... <sighs> the validation is nice. Like I've just been a mix of feelings, disbelief and shock, but also going, I guess I don't completely suck at this mystery writing thriller thing. Like, especially like this book, I, I'm proud of it, but it's very different from my other books. It's very different from the Ivies. It's, it's less commercial in a lot of ways. And maybe that's why it worked out this way. It's personal, it's dark, it's slower paced. This is the irony of we call everything a thriller and that's kind of unfair. This is kind of straight up a murder mystery. It's a mystery. It's suspense. And so, yeah, the Mystery Writers of America, the nominations panel, really liked this book. And it's award nominated. And now you get to say that I'm Edgar Award nominated. I am an Edgar Award nominated author. And it's the Oscar cliche. But truly, it is just an honor to be nominated, no matter what happens at the Edgars in late April. Just having the nomination, like, it's gonna stick with me. Would it be cool to win? Obviously, like, I'm not one of those, you know, celebrities who's like, oh, I don't even care about winning. That's a straight up lie, anyone who says that. But I definitely have reminded myself over and over again that I am among amazing company. Like, I looked up the people who have won the Edgar Award in the past, and it's kind of an I am not worthy situation, like books that I love. I mean, just the nominations. And that's, again, truly an honor to be nominated. Like when you look at the spread of nominees going back, both, you know, in the YA category, who are my peers in the adult category, which I read a lot of those books, like the titles and the authors, you're like, wow. 
So like truly I've already accomplished something I didn't expect to ever accomplish in my career. So I'm gonna go to New York. I'm gonna have an amazing time no matter what happens. I'm gonna see my first Broadway show. I'm going to meet my editor and my agent in person for the first time ever. So yeah, I'm, I'm gonna do all the things and I'm really excited and I wanted to share it with you and I probably should have shared it with you a few months ago. Though if I had, I hadn't decided to go to New York at that time. So you know, you get the full scope of the updates and who knows, maybe I will actually be decent and remember to vlog. The thing about vlogging is that it in many ways takes away from the experience. It's hard to be organically in an experience so it's kind of touch and go whether I actually am going to vlog it for you guys because the thing about the last year, this is where I guess we're going to transition into the broader updates portion, I have really enjoyed just being fully present in my life and not thinking about social media, the social media angle, having to work filming schedules into my schedule, pulling out my phone to film things as I did them, including writerly things. It's been very, very nice. There's something to be said for kind of unplugging and detoxing. I know I'm not alone in this mindset and this attitude, and I definitely think I am representative. I am part of, uh, I you know, a group of people. I feel like especially older millennials and also pure millennials, but I, I am an elder millennial, we came up with social media. It was literally our peers who invented all of these sites. Like, you know, I was at college at the same time that Mark Zuckerberg invented Facebook right across the river from where I went to school. I've had a Facebook account since the first month Facebook existed. I was an early-ish adopter on Twitter. I did resist Instagram a, a little longer, but the, the point is like you could come up with all these things like I learned to live and socialize on the internet before social media itself like I lived on live journal for years I cut my teeth as a teenager being a super nerd learning to code HTML and like building fan websites and like I've always lived on the internet and I just think it hit a point of burnout I think there's this magic formula for burnout with social media having to be your brand online all the time for authors specifically and generally it's always been kind of bizarre there's my author self and there's my real life self and they're it is me but they are separate i purposefully use different names though i don't go out of my way to like hide my real self but it is kind of funny i we had a i had a work conversation the other day and someone on the call was like they're, they're leaving the company and talking about each of us and they were like, oh, like Alexa, you know, you, you've published one book. And I was like, oh, I, I, I've published four. I don't talk to my colleagues about this stuff. I have two pretty clearly delineated lives. They're like, you have, you've published four books in the last five years. Like people don't know. And I've, it's been nice to like, I've mentally and emotionally like really fully focused on my IRL self uh, for the last year. And it's been really nice and I've pro provided this stuff in other updates. I've done all the things that I told you that I was going to do and needed to do, you know, with my mother's estate and putting things in storage and kind of grappling with that emotional stuff. You know, generally this part of this is all a side effect of grief, meaning when you lose a major person in your life, like grief kind of rewires your brain in a lot of ways, <laughs> for better or for worse, sometimes worse. I'm definitely a worse version of myself. Generally speaking, that's a, that's a takeaway post grief for me. Post, I mean, are you ever really post grief? But the worst throes of grief, losing my mom. I'm a worse version of the person that I used to be in a lot of ways, but you gotta learn to deal with that. <laughs> You have to learn to forge forward. And thus meaning, especially with all of the stuff I took on with publishing, I'm, I tend to take on more than I can handle sometimes. And I, I love to run at full speed and do a lot of different things. And I love to help other people, but I, it's kind of like a, well, it's leaves a plane crash metaphor where you need to put on your own oxygen mask before helping others. And for years and years and years, I, I definitely wasn't tending to my own oxygen mask, but I guess the plane wasn't crashing yet, so it didn't matter. Mixed metaphor, you know, I'm good at those. But especially after losing my mom, then we all have the pandemic, but also the, the increasing pressures of 
the stuff I have to do as an author and with my day job and just all of those things. Um, it, but with my mom dying, losing my primary support system in a lot of ways, like you don't realize all the things your parents do for you, even as adults. I was a full grown ass adult, but my mom was still doing certain things for me. And it's like, oh, the vacuum of like losing that person who was, you know, doing something that you didn't even think about. I did not mean to get emotional, that was, but you, you know, I've just been pushing through things and then I guess I'm sharing this to be fully transparent, obviously front loading this with good news and like 2023 is off to a really great start for me and, and like I feel like my career is finally like sitting in a good place and heading in a good place. Even, do you know how far behind on deadline I am? You're like, I wonder what happened to Alexa, I hope she's okay. Yes and no, and uh, I will finish this book eventually, come hell or high water. After I finish filming this video, I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna make more progress because my editor is gonna literally murder me. I mean, she's gonna see me in person in April. She'll kill me probably if the book isn't done by then, right? But I share all this because I, I think the transparency kind of helps. You know, for years I've had people ask me, you know, how do you do it all? And I've joked that I'm tired all the time and like, it also, the other, I don't have, you know, a husband and kids, that definitely helps, you know, all my time is mine, technically. But, um, I don't handle it all very well. I haven't always handled it very well, and I clearly reached a breaking point last year where I knew that I wasn't handling it very well, and I decided to pull way back on the social, me social media thing, and that's like an overarching term, but the author is brand thing, I hit a wall. I hit a wall, y'all. <laughs> So I guess I'm overdue for making an updated video about authors and social media because my new answer is like if you don't have to do it, don't do it. But it, to a certain degree, up to a certain point, you do have to do it. But I I feel very fortunate. I'm at a point in my mid listery where I don't think it matters either way, and I'm glad to do way way less of it. I've I've I'm doing way better. If you want to know how I'm doing, I'm doing way better. Um, but I'm I'm definitely still figuring out a new balance for my life and you know still gotta take care of that cracked tooth in the back of my mouth you want it you're like how does she do it all poorly is the answer she does it poorly you know for, I've prioritized some things and deprioritized other things to my detriment and so I'm still in the process of playing catch up and taking care of things that I know that I need to take care of oh, I have to do my taxes <sighs> I'd literally, I've said it before, I would literally rather write an entire book than do paperwork. It's one of my deficit points. Uh, how do I do it all? I don't. I do it poorly. I do some things well and I do other things incredibly poorly. But where I'm at is I honestly am enjoying just being an author. I like writing books. I want to be able to spend more of my time writing books. Though I do enjoy marketing books. I, when I click into that mode, like that's the other thing, like having to do the author marketing thing for Pretty Dead Queens um, took me away from my draft writing for the bitter end and it's part of the reason I'm past my deadline. Like juggling, juggling those two things at the same time is very, very hard. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm learning how to kind of settle into where I want to be and what I want to do and how I want to manage book writing and you know being an author with a capital A and what that means for me long term because I'm at math. It's 2023. I'm at five years since my debut came out, which is seven years since getting my current agent, six years since selling that book, and way longer writing. But let, let's start the clock from when my debut was published. So we're at five years. I'm four books deep, published, struggling to finish my fifth. It, it'll get done eventually. It's gonna be a book. It's gonna come out. I actually like, it's, it's, I love this book and I'm really glad I wrote it and being award nominated is amazing. I got fantastic reviews for this as well. Like the school library journal recommended this for general collections, which is like the best library recommendation of my four YA books. My friend who is a librarian told me, oh, that's really good. That's like as close as you can get to a starred review without having a starred review. The starred review still eludes me, but like that felt amazing. And if you like kind of small town secrets, slower burn, teen detective, murder mystery types, like I'm proud of this book. I think it's got a great twist. I am happy with kind of the, it's very, the personal 
aspects of it, etc. However, I know that this is not as frothy and commercial and imminently recommendable and like pick upable from like a book table in a bookstore as the Ivies, which let me tell you, this is the paperback exceeding my expectations in paperback. Like my my hardcover did pretty darn well for the Ivies. I was very happy with my hardcover sales. My paperback sales are beautifully healthy. The $10.99 price point and like I think it's less daunting because it's smaller and it's just it's a really nice paperback package. I've gone into bookstores and like seen it on tables like I love the life this book is having in paperback and what I'm excited for the bitter end with is it's a lot more similar in terms of like the pitch and the commercial nature and the cast. It's like pure froth. Eventually I will make a more in-depth video about what the heck happened with the entire writing experience at the bitter end. Part of the other reason I haven't been compelled to make videos but I promise to make them is I've been going through a transition as a writer. I can tell that I've been going through a transition as a writer in terms of like taking on challenges and learning things and process. The bitter end has had process to it and it's definitely going to be very interesting but I think think it's gonna be a fantastic like frothy commercial YA thriller and so I'm excited to finish that and have that come out and then I get to look forward to like what I want to do next to finally writing adult thriller which I really want to do I've been solidifying more like the one that I think I want to write and kind of gearing up for that but I also have to think like I'm an Edgar Award nominated YA thriller writer which is great and bizarre and I have high hopes for the bitter end like what am I gonna do YA and adult at the same time what other YA thriller ideas do I have because I feel like with you know these are gonna end up being like my my YA thriller trilogy between the Ivies, Pretty Dead Queens and the bitter end it's like I wrote my three favorite tropes <laughs> into three YA books boarding school, small town secrets, and the bitter end is isolation trope. Uh, like, and then the Renan style murder mystery thriller. Um, I have to figure out what else, like I'm excited to write. Cause I, I, I always want it to be about like what I'm excited to write. And I'm very excited about the adult one. It's gonna be, guys, it's gonna be bleak. It's gonna be nihilistic. It's gonna be like juicy. I'm gonna put all of like my trauma into it about like losing my parent. It's gonna be, I mean, it's gonna be a horror show in the best possible way. <laughs> So I know people are worried. I know that I've dropped the ball on plenty of things, but I also like I had to stop doing all so much and some of the things that I was doing, especially to oh yeah, I'm always good at talking in circles. Yeah, I mentioned like grief and changing your brain. Like uh, another realization for me, the point I was trying to make there is that like I've become a worse friend, you know, a worse version of myself and part of that is friend. And so in the last year, I tried to prioritize some of my social relationships, you know, I'm still, I can be very flaky with some of my like online communication and I've like forgot to follow up with certain people, but certainly IRL, like the people here in, in California, I've been better about connecting with them and seeing them and checking in and not, I still will disappear for weeks at a time in my like little like introvert homebody writer hole, but I'm, I'm trying to be better at connecting. I've seen my family um, in the last year, like my, my actual family all the way in Maryland. Like I got to see them and you know, I, I did a trip up to Northern California for a library event and I got to spend some time uh, with my friend up there, uh, Jenica Cohen. And actually I got to see her twice in like the last six months, which was great because I did my mini book tour with Jennifer Lynn Alvarez, which was a great experience that was, you know, getting out of my comfort zone a little and actually leaving my apartment and going to places. And I will kind of put together like lessons learned and that will turn into content eventually. And yeah, I've just been kind of doing stuff and trying to enjoy the stuff that I've been doing. And I do also just, I like just being an author. Like maybe with a lowercase a. Like being an author with a lowercase a is kind of nice and I'm trying to extract joy out of those things while bringing more balance to my life in general. There's still a ton of stuff that I, I feel that I have the option to do and possibility to do. So yeah, that's where I am. I'm still figuring stuff out. I'm still kind of muddling through. I'm still writing this this book. This book is gonna kill me, it's fine. Um, but I also like what's kept me going is like, I'm gonna be really proud of it when it's finally done. And 
to be clear, like a version of the book got more or less mostly done. I've been miring in revisions since November. The revisions are, that's what's trying to kill me. It's gonna be great. Um, that's where I am. I'm, I'm doing things. I both do and don't miss you, YouTube. But also, I made that video about TikTok several months ago. I put myself on cold turkey from TikTok in November, so I have not been cheating on you with TikTok this whole time. Because uh, that was the other thing. I've been detoxing myself from be all the social media distraction to focus on more of the things that matter. Um, I've been cooking a lot more because when I cook, I get to listen to audiobooks. So I've been doing. I've doing a ton of reading still and using the reading to like refill that creative well and like kind of push me through the writing process and my cooking's getting pretty good I feel feel very like competent in, in that arena which is nice I have considered should I make cooking content but uh, I don't want to show you my sad uh, micro baby kitchen in my apartment that's never quite clean enough and I don't think would video very well. Man, if I had like a gorgeous home with a beautiful kitchen, this might become a uh, instant pot cooking channel. <laughs> cooking in books, I guess we could call it, but um, alas. If you are local to Los Angeles, I am going to be doing a signing at the LA Times Festival of Books at the Mysterious Galaxy booth. I'll put that information down below. Like that's something that I'm doing because I'm just going to go to the festival anyway. So I thought I would do a signing at a booth. As I said, I'm going to be in New York uh, April 27th for the Edgar Awards. I bought myself a sparkly dress. I'm going to dress up and I'm going to have an amazing time no matter what i heard it's like a steak dinner and like i'm hoping there might be like champagne and stuff like i'm just gonna fully enjoy the moment like which is why on that trip like i'm not gonna do any other like extra work i thought oh if i'm gonna be in new york and then i'm gonna go to boston after that to see friends like maybe i should do a bookstore event and maybe i should chill the f out and stop turning every single trip i go on into a working holiday i am very very bad at that like maybe i should take a deep breath and enjoy things more. But that said, I'm seriously considering going to BoucherCon in August. It's a mystery convention because it's going to be in San Diego. Like I'm, I'm on the fence. Like I'm probably gonna go. Part of the reason for that is I was on an episode of the Thrillers by the Book Club pod. I had an amazing conversation with Chelsea and Olivia and they're going to be at some thriller events. They're like, you should go. And so I might, I might leave my house and go to a thing and, you know, try and be on some panels. And so that might be fun. So yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm doing things and I'm going to be out and about um but i'm i'm finding balance and figuring stuff out and i'm looking at the spot where i write like you're gonna turn off this camera and you're gonna work on your book just have to put on like a playlist and like i'm in the middle of act two it's fine this is progress we're because of the podcast i kicked my thriller tbr in the butt and i'm finally catching up on that so you're gonna get book wrap-up videos coming soon because i genuinely miss making those because I've been reading this whole time. I just haven't been making videos, um, which I guess in some way it's nice to like just have a pure reading experience for a little while, but like tentatively tiptoey, I'm back, but that goes in quotes because not really. I'm going to take kind of the whole filming schedule, editing videos thing. Like I'm, I'm going to take it slowly because again, my priority is I have to finish this book. I have to, I have to finish this book like like wouldn't it be hilarious if I flew to New York and my editor murdered me in the streets of Manhattan because like I <laughs> my poor my poor editor guys she's a saint that's your conclusion but I'm showing this to you too so you know that sometimes we're hot messes hot messes no one's perfect if you're also struggling with writing welcome it's it's you know have I I wouldn't say I've reformed my thoughts about writer's block. Like I haven't changed my mind, but I've definitely been muddling through, like blocks are real. I've never contested that blocks are real. And you know, I think it's, it's interesting to think about a block when you're having a block, but it's not like a mystical force that's been keeping me from writing. It's just a series of variables and I'm gonna, I'm gonna get through it. So I hope wherever you are, you're doing well, that your writing is going well. It's cheesy as heck, but thank you for being with me. Like, I, I, it feels very full circle that I've been talking on this channel, you know, since I got my book deal about, like, my writing process and, like, trying to get better at writing and, like, you know, my expectations for myself and my career. And now I've been nominated for an award and I get to share that with you and... 
you know? Yeah. So yeah, that's where I am. D decently optimistic that I'm going to make some more videos for you guys soon and finish this book and do all the things. And yeah, I've totally run out of steam with what to say and I'm rambling on a good day, so I will leave you here. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching and happy writing.